This is Mrs. Carnes, and this video is on solving multi-step equations. This is part one of a three-part video series on this topic. First of all, to review, we have to remember that to solve equations means that we need to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. And then we also need to remember that to find the solution to an equation, that is to find the value of the variable that makes that equation true. Those are two things that you should already know. And we're going to take a look at some things to remember when solving equations, some very important facts to take into consideration. The very first thing that you'll need to remember, that is, in most cases, in most equations that you're going to solve, you're going to use inverse operations to undo the addition and the subtraction first. Then you will undo your multiplication and division. So when you come to a problem, what you first want to notice is that the x, or the variable, is on the left-hand side of the equal sign in this case. You also want to notice that there has been a 3 that has been added to that x, and there is a 4 that's being multiplied to that variable. So because the general case of the rules tell us that we should undo the addition and subtraction first, we know that we need to undo this adding of 3. So to undo that, the inverse operation of addition we know is subtraction. So we will subtract 3. And again, what we do to one side of the equal sign, we must do to the other side of the equal sign. Once that happens, we end up with 4x is equal to negative 1 and a negative 3 becomes negative 4. So now we start with this equation. And we say, OK, we know that we now need to get rid of this 4, and it's being multiplied to the x. So that's the second thing we now undo. Addition and subtraction are all taken care of. So now we undo the multiplication and division that we see. In this case, we're seeing multiplication. To undo multiplication, we use division. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. This becomes a 1, or we can write it as just x. x is equal to negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. That is the solution to the equation that we started off with. Now, if you want to check to make sure that this is right, you know that the solution to an equation is the value that the variable takes on to make the equation true. So if we wanted to check it, what we would do is we would plug this negative 1 solution back in. So I would have 4. I would plug in negative 1 for my variable, and I continue with the rest of the equation. And what I'm trying to check is to see, is this a true statement? Well, negative 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, and so they both equal negative 1. Therefore, we know that our solution works. Now, something else to remember is that it does not matter what side of the equal sign that your variable is on. The only thing that you care about is getting that variable all by itself on that side of the equal sign. So in this example, in this equation, we have the variable n. n is now on the right-hand side of our equal sign. And so we just need to get everything away from that n. We need to undo these things. We know that we have a negative 5 here. We also know that we have a 2 in front of the n. Now we know that the 2 is being multiplied to the n. This negative 5 is being subtracted because this sign in front of it tells us that we're going to use the opposite of subtraction to get rid of it. So using the last rule that we came up with, which was normally we will get rid of our addition and subtraction first, we're going to get rid of this negative 5. And to do that, we will add 5, now remember, to both sides of the equal sign. A lot of times students want to add the 5 to this 2n, but that's not on both sides of the equal sign, so you have to work on both sides. So once we do this, we end up with 12 is equal to 2n. 
And so now we start all over again and we say, okay, is there any more addition and subtraction? Which there's not. But we do notice that we have a multiplication between the 2 and the m. Again, to undo multiplication, we use division. And so we'll divide by 2. And we'll end up with 6 is equal to m. And if you wanted to check, you could plug that 6 back into your equation. We'll do it without writing it down this time. So we would say 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 plus a negative 5 is 7. Something else that you'll need to remember is that the sign in front of the term stays with it. What we mean by that is this sign here. This negative sign has to stay with the 2. This negative sign has to stay with the 1 fifth, t. So each term has a sign, and that sign has to stay with it. The reason that's important is when we begin to solve this equation, we notice that the t is on the left-hand side of the equal sign. We have to get rid of the negative 1 fifth. We also need to get rid or undo the negative 2. We undo addition and subtraction first. Since the 1 fifth is multiplied, we need to get rid of that negative 2. And so to do that, following the steps, we add 2 to both sides. Once that's done, we end up with a 6 on the right-hand side. And a lot of people will say that we just have a 1 fifth t on the left-hand side. But what you have to remember is that that negative sign also has to continue to stay with the term. So we actually have a negative one-fifth t is equal to 6. Now if you remember, this is multiplication, and to undo multiplication we would use division, except since it's a fraction, the way we divide fractions is we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're actually going to multiply each side by the reciprocal of negative one-fifth. And the reciprocal of negative one-fifth is negative five over one. Negative five over one on both sides. These cancel out, leaving us a one t, or just t, is equal to, and this becomes six times negative five is negative 30, and a one is in the denominator, but we don't need to put that one there. So the answer, or the solution is t is equal to negative 30. Now you could just very easily plug that back in for that t value to make sure that that solution works. The last thing I want you to remember is that sometimes there are special cases that you have to watch out for. Sometimes there are exceptions to the rules and this is one of those examples. If you take a look at this, we know that we have the a on the right on the left hand side of the equal sign. We have to get that alone. We know that this is a 10 being subtracted from it and we know that there's a negative 4 that's being divided. Now normally we would get rid of the addition and subtraction first. That was the rule. But in this case, because the entire numerator is being divided by the negative 4, we have to get rid of this negative 4 first. So since it's being divided by negative 4, we're going to undo division by multiplying by negative 4 on both sides. That will make these disappear. We will then have a minus 10 is equal to negative 8. Now we have an equation that you should know what to do. There's a subtraction of 10 here, so to undo subtraction we add 10 to both sides and you would end up with a is equal to 2. Now just to make sure this works, let's go back and plug it into our equation. I would plug in 2 for a, 2 minus 10 divided by negative 4. 2 minus 10 is actually negative 8. Negative 8 divided by negative 4, remember negative divided by negative is a positive, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, and that's what we were supposed to have it equal to. So again, we know that that a equals 2 is a solution to that equation. So there's some things that you should remember. In the next video, we're going to look at even some more things that you need to remember equations that will get even more complex. So make sure you put these into the memory and keep them in your notes.